In this video, I'd like to show you the difference between a void and a non-void method in terms of calling a method. And in order to do that, I've created two methods, addV and addR. addV is a void method and addR is a non-void method. addV takes two numbers, adds it together, and then prints out the sum of those numbers. addR does something similar, except for it adds the two numbers together and then returns the sum back to where the method was called. Let's examine these method calls a little bit closer to see if we can determine if there's a difference between calling a void and a non-void method. So I've blurred out their implementation and I've highlighted their calls inside of the main method. You can see that math.addv is the void method and math.addr is the return method. You can also see that the void method is standing by itself or standing alone and the non-void method add r is inside of a programming statement. Let's focus on add v, our void method, and then come back and focus on add r, our non-void method. What if we were to take add v and use it like a non-void method, and that is put it in some kind of programming statement? And that's exactly what I've done right here. I said math.addv n1 comma n2. If we tried to run this right now, it would give us an error. And it would say something like error void type not allowed here because a void call cannot be used inside of a programming statement. Void calls must always stand alone or be by themselves. So if you ever see a method inside of another programming statement, whether it be inside of an if statement, whether it be inside of a system.out.println, or one method being assigned to a variable, you know 100% that that's a non-void method. Because if it was a void method, it would give you an error before you could do anything else. Now let's see if the opposite is true. What if I took a non-void method like add r and used it like a void method, meaning I'm going to make it stand alone by itself. So I just say math.addr n1 n2. Is this going to cause an error? No, it's not. In this case, it wouldn't print out anything. It would bring 30 back to the program, but then there's no system out print line to handle it, or no if statement, or no assignment statement to handle it. So it would just go into the nothingness. So you are not guaranteed, if a method is standing by itself, to know 100% that it's going to be a void method. Because, as we've just shown, we can use a non-void method and make it look like it is a void call. And you say, well, why would that be useful? Why would I ever want to make a non-void method look like a void method or use it outside of a programming statement. Well, I have a small example to use just to show you an example of when you could use it like a void method. Here on the screen, I have a class called tester and I've created something called an ArrayList inside. Now, I'm not particularly interested whether you know what an ArrayList is or not. It's just a list of something. It's going to be a collection of some values. And in this case, it's going to be a collection of integers. And in order to add something to this collection, I'm going to call the method add. And you'll see that it's adding one, two, three to my list. And so if I was to print out that list using system.out.println, it would look like one, two, three, with brackets around it separated by commas. Now the question becomes, are these void method calls? And they sure do look like void methods, and it would make sense that they're void, because what they're doing is they're adding something to the list and they're not bringing anything back to the program. Or are they? Let's use them inside of a system out print line statement and see what happens. I want you to ask yourself, if these were void methods, what would happen if I tried to run this program right now? If we tried to run this program and these were void methods, you would get an error saying void type not allowed here. But this program will run and it will, interestingly enough, return true, true, one, two, three. Now, the one, two, three is just coming from our system out print line statement. But the true statements are coming from these three lines of code. Because the add method, it's actually a Boolean return method saying, yes, I have added the item to the list. So if I wanted to see whether the item was added or not, I could use it in a system out print line statement. This is a perfect example of occasionally using a non-void method like a void method, having it stand alone. But as I indicated earlier, most of the time when you see a method by itself, it's going to be a void method. And 100% of the time, if you see a method inside of another programming statement, it will be a non-void method. 
And so now with that understanding, what I want you to do is try a little exercise that I've prepared here. I've created a class called student and you're probably not familiar with the student class because I created it and you can't see the implementation of it. But what I want you to do is I want you to look at each line and each line that has a line one, a line two, a line three by it has a method next to it. And I want you to look at that method and determine if that method is a void or a non-void method. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can look at each line and determine whether a method is void or non-void. Okay, now I'm going to give you the answer, but there's only one part of the answer that can be 100%, and that is the non-void methods. Why can the non-void methods be 100%? Because void methods cannot be inside of programming statements. Anytime you see a method inside of a programming statement, it has to be non-void. So numbers 4 through 8 and 10 are non-void. Now the other methods, set name, set age, and set GPA, they are void methods. Now, can we be guaranteed of that? No, not unless we look at the API or actually have access to the implementation. But whether they are void methods or are non-void methods is really besides the point because they're being used like void methods. They're not bringing anything back to the program. Or if they are bringing something back to the program, we really don't care what that is. The main method is doing nothing to handle the information that's being sent back. So hopefully you got all those correct, and hopefully you can see which ones are non-void, and then which ones are acting like they're void, or are actually void methods. So to sum it up, void methods cannot be called like a non-void method. So if you have a void method in a programming statement, it is wrong, it will produce an error, and your code will not run. And then secondly, non-void methods can, and occasionally will be called like void methods. Like we gave you in the examples above, the add method of the ArrayList class. That's a non-void method, but it's often used like a void method. In programming, it's important to understand how methods operate, and one important part of methods is the return type, being void or non-void. And so if you can understand the syntax, and when a void method is being called or when a non-void method is being called, it will help you along the way in being a better programmer. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly. Thanks again for watching.